Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they have encouraged, comforted, and strengthened believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratia Podcast Network. My name is Ryan Bush. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains. William Cooper lived at Berkhamsted Rectory with his father John and his mother Anne along with his siblings until he was six years old. When William's younger brother was born, Anne, his mother, died in childbirth. That same year, William was placed in the care of Dr. Pittman, the master of a large boarding school at Market Street, Herefordshire. This was a sad change of scene for a six-year-old boy. The loss of the happy parsonage and his mother's tenderness would profoundly shape William Cooper's life. It was, to him, in every way incalculable and irreparable. Things only got worse. At the boarding school, William was singled out as the target of the cruel and relentless designs of a 15-year-old boy in the school. His treatment of William may rightly be called savage. It caused such a dread in William's heart of him that he was afraid to even lift his eyes upon his persecutor higher than his knees, and he knew him better by his shoe buckles than by any other part of his dress. Cooper's tyrant's practices were eventually discovered. He was expelled. Cooper was also removed. Even when he was a young child, William Cooper exhibited tendencies toward melancholy and despair. This malady showed itself time and again throughout his life, both before he was converted and after. He once described his days as a lying down in horror and rising up in despair, and he said that he was cast forth as a wanderer on a world unknown. Cooper felt a deep conviction of sin. He had a keen sense of God's wrath and a deep despair of escaping it. It would be best, as Cooper said himself, to draw a veil over the secrets of his prison house. But God, in his rich mercy and amazing grace, called William Cooper from darkness into his marvelous light. He used the Book of Romans to lead William Cooper to repentance of sin and faith in Christ. From Cooper's pen flew verses that outshone nearly all of England's poets, But we don't thank God that Cooper was a great poet. Rather, we thank God that William Cooper wielded his pen for the good of the church and the glory of God. He wrote the hymn, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. This hymn has ministered to countless souls since it was written. For example, quite some time ago in Scotland, there lived a young man whom the Lord had saved. On this particular day, he was on his way to the hospital for an appointment with a doctor. He had sores on his tongue that just wouldn't heal. After careful examination, the doctor discovered that it was cancer. In a compassionate manner, the doctor explained to the young man and his parents who had come with him that the only hope of saving his life was to remove the tongue. Just maybe the cancer would be stopped. I want you to understand, John, explained the doctor, that even if the surgery is successful, you will never be able to speak again. He paused and then added, We must do the surgery as soon as possible. Today. John and his parents were shocked and saddened by the news the doctor gave them. They had come expecting some medicine from the doctor, but instead they needed to stay for surgery. The doctor and the nurses prepared. John was helped onto the operating table. Before his parents left the room, the doctor asked the young man if there was anything he wished to say before the operation began. For a moment, a shadow crossed the face of the young man, and tears rolled from the corners of his eyes as he considered that he would never again speak a word 
Never again would he be able to praise in word or song his beloved Lord and Savior, who had done so much for him. But soon, the tears stopped, and a smile lit up his face. A heavenly joy filled his heart, and he began to sing. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains with great feeling he sang the second verse before he reached the third verse not an eye of those who stood around the bed was dry his heart was in the song his love to his precious savior clearly evident then came the last verse and as he sang it it was as if they heard it for the first time when this poor lisping stammering tongue lies silent in the John was then given a gas to breathe in to make him sleep. The doctors performed the operation, but he never regained consciousness. He was taken to heaven to eternally praise and glorify his Redeemer. You don't often hear me sing on this podcast. In fact, I never have. But I wanted to sing that song because it is that song that the Lord has used in my life time and time again to remind me of the gospel. When my heart fears, when my own conscience condemns me, this song has ministered to my soul, and I thank the Lord for it, and I look forward to thanking William Cooper for it as well. This song was originally published in Oni Hymns, and it was originally titled praise for the fountain opened and it's based on Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1 which says on that day there shall be a fountain opened for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and uncleanness the fountain for me was opened on February 7 1998 a 17 year old boy completely lost in his sin blind to the things of God, shaking his fist in God's face, but the fountain was opened to me. I return to that song often, and what it leads me to is the great work of God on my behalf. It reminds me of a passage from Thomas Vincent's The True Christian's Love to the Unseen Christ. He wrote this, It was the strong love of Christ which brought him down from heaven for you to assume your nature. What kind of love was this, that God should become man? It was the love of Christ which made him to fulfill all righteousness for you. He yielded perfect obedience to the law, both moral and ceremonial, that you might have the benefit of it. It was the love of Christ which made him submit himself to the temptations of the devil for you, so that he, suffering, being tempted, might be able to support you when you are tempted. It was the love of Christ which made him lay down his life for you, that such a person as Christ, so excellent, so innocent, should undergo death, and such a death as that of the cross, so disgraceful, so painful, that he should submit to such ignominy and endure such agony, such tearing in the flesh, such pressures in his spirit, and that with such resolution and willingness, with such submission and patience, and that for such as you. Here was love stronger than death. Oh, the height, 
Oh, the depth of his love. There are such dimensions in this love of Christ as the longest line of your most extended thoughts and imaginations can never be able to reach and measure. Ever since by faith I saw the stream Thy flowing wounds supply Redeeming love has been my theme And shall be till I die Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make melody in your heart to Him.